NBA season is in full swing and there are a few spine-chilling surprises around the league. I'm joined by our NBA experts Emmanuel Tobe and Dominic Fernaza to figure out what is going on around the league right now. Dom, we're going to start with you for this first question. Are the Suns the most dysfunctional franchise in the NBA? The Suns have been pretty bad, but they can't hold a candle to the New York Knicks. Easily the most dysfunctional franchise in the NBA, maybe all of sports. Let's just recap. The Phil Jackson era just came to an end. They extended his contract for two years, let him conduct the draft, draft a point guard that fit his outdated system, and then when he was trying to trade their franchise cornerstone Kristaps Porzingis, after humiliating Melo through the press, they fired him. And that's where it gets better, okay? Yes, I agree. I know you're, like I know you're a Knicks fan, so you're used to everything being kind of bad and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. with Phil Jackson being gone and Carmelo being traded, to me, it's clear skies right now. Well, it's not clear skies, but the sun you is like poking out. Is. The sun, yeah. But right now they're trying to get him to a more limited, quiet role and stuff like that. He's the owner. You have to, like, you have to start looking up. Uh, you also have Porzingis, who's averaging 30 points a game. I believe the Suns are dysfunctional. There's so many problems that they have right now in that system. So many rumors and stuff like that. And they have a culture of just letting good guys, talented guys, go, and then not really getting anything for them. Goran Dragic, Isaiah Thomas. Now you have Eric Gordon, and the owner right now, there's rumors going on that he's trying to fill Jackson. Eric Bledsoe, they want to get him. I mean, Eric Bledsoe, yeah, but right now there's, there's rumors but going they on they're trying to fill Jackson him and not players. let him go. You know, they got Devin Boker. They have Josh Jackson. They have Marquise Chris. You know, so they have all these young, really the Knicks have Porzingis, maby frank the tank who knows but other than that they've had no history of developing players but the Suns don't overplayed want to play though. noah they overpaid tim hardaway they've been a mess of a franchise for as long as it can be but the Suns, they don't look like they want to play that's the thing yes they have talented players but mm -hmm. if they don't have any motivation because they don't like the office or the coaches then what's going to happen so right now it's like the they Suns don't want to play have a lot of good talent definitely some stuff to figure out in the front office so man we're going to start <laughs> with this next one are the atlanta magic legit I gotta be honest, I'm pretty excited for the Atlanta Magic, especially with them being in the East. But right now they're just playing at just such a comf they look so comfortable um, that it's hard to not really go for them, you know? If you look at how they're playing this year compared to last year, they're shooting a lot better. You know, you have AG, now he's playing in, in the power forward position. They're shooting threes better than the Warriors did last year, which I'm sure is gonna continue. But, I mean, just looking at how they play, as well as, you know, they're scoring the second most points per game behind the Warriors. I mean, their offense is really flowing. Their defense is inconsistent at times, but I'm so excited for this team. Their offense is flowing because they're shooting 44% on threes. Aaron Gordon is shooting 60% on threes. Mario Hijonia is shooting 55. Now, unless they turn into the second coming of Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, except for so much better, I think that's very clearly going to go down. Last season, they shot 30% on threes. If you just drop that number down to where it was last season, the points are going to fall. I think they'll be better than last year. Obviously, Aaron Gordon's making strides. They, you know, they have a talented team, but overall, I just, I think maybe they'll make the playoffs in the East. But They're I still, definitely making the playoffs I don't think they have any They're superstar. I don't think they have the any All Stars. I'm not, not that. But it's a different NBA league now. Right now, you don't need any superstars in the East to really make the playoffs because look who how many superstars we have in the East right oh, I mean, now. Yeah, if your goal is to make the playoffs and get swept in the first round, then yeah, they're very <laughs> legit. But you know, if you want to make a little noise, then I just don't, I don't see it happening. Mm -hmm. So obviously the Magic with some weapons, and you mentioned the East is weaker, so that certainly helps. Last question, Dom, we're going to start with you. Are the Knicks the worst team in the NBA? No, not even close. I mean, you know, they're 3-3, three and three, they beat the Cavs. I don't know how much that means this season, but you know, they, you got teams like the Nothing. Atlanta Hawks, the Phoenix Suns, the Dallas Mavericks, the Chicago Bulls. I think there's a clear lower class of teams and the Knicks are going to be fighting for that one of those last playoff spots in the East. Once again, doesn't really mean a ton, but I think they're clearly a step up with those teams that are really tanking. No, I think the Knicks are definitely in that lower tier of um, the lower tier of teams that you just named. I mean, you, you said it like two questions ago about them being the most dysfunctional team in your personal mm -hmm. opinion. How does that not translate into them struggling and them you because know, other being other organizations weak? have a clear plan of what they're trying to do. They're kind of, they realize they're in the rebuilding phase, they're taking advantage of that to get that top pick. You know, the Mavs are a smart organization that aren't playing well now, where the Knicks are the stupidest organization in sports <laughs> that happened to luck their way into one superstar. Who's so sometimes you agree with me wins. then that they are in the lower tier. That they're, yeah, you just... You I mean, they might be in the lower tier, but they're not the worst team in the NBA. I'd say top three worst teams. Top three? Right now, right now. No, the Atlanta Hawks, definitely worse. Phoenix Suns, definitely worse. Chicago Bulls, definitely worse. Dallas Mavericks, definitely oh, worse. Oh, you have the... I know, but if you look at the Hawks, and if you look at the Dallas Hawks Mavericks... Win. Look at their team... No, but look at their teams, yes. Okay, we can be honest. Yeah, they won. Y'all beat the Cleveland Cavaliers. But Denver at the same Nuggets. time, how much, did that, how much did that matter, though? Like, if... You know, how Cleveland was playing at that game, and... 
uh, how much they were struggling on the offense, the Cavaliers. What it really comes down to, though, is the Knicks have one thing that all those other bottom-tier teams we're talking about don't, and that's a clear superstar in Porzingis. That matters so much in the NBA. Honestly, if you took Porzingis out, maybe they would be the worst, but the fact is they have a superstar none of those other teams do, and so that, for me, just puts the Knicks above them. I have some front office question for the Knicks, but right now not the worst team in the NBA. It seems like the clear consensus. Mm -hmm. Well, some ghost food things are happening around the NBA. When we come back, Andrew will be joining with NFL trick-or-treaters to talk some football. Stick around.